Today we're talking about margins and orientations. Let's look at some definitions. It's the edge or border of something as it states here in the slide. And, it, and the orientation determines the orientation. And I'll let you finish reading the slide there. I'll try not to read all these words to you. What I've tried to show on this slide is you have, of course, your title area of the slide, the text area, I call it, in your margins. But you also have unused space that is defined by your printer. And every printer is different, as you know. Some printers will go down to like a half inch margin. Some will go down to maybe a quarter inch. Some will go down to a zero. I believe from what I can remember, the differences between the inkjet and the laser jet printers, the laser jet printers, I believe can have smaller margins. And what we're really talking about is if you have a, if you have a sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11, you have, and you have one inch margins, you have this one inch border around your slide and this landscape, which is this direction, portrait is this direction, like a picture. That's what it will look like. You'll have a usable area of seven and a half by 10. So you have one inch less here and one inch less here. Same with top and bottom. That's what I'm, what's up, that's what I'm calling a one inch by one inch margin. Where if your printer allows a half inch margin, you get much more space. You get half inch on each side and a half inch top and bottom. And that could also vary based on your printer. So then you end up with a half inch by half inch margin or seven and a half by 10 usable area. And it may not sound like a lot at half an inch, but if you just look at the two overlays and look at the two graphics, you can see how much more space you get with a half inch margin versus a one inch margin. I'll try to show these side by side. So you can get an idea of the difference in margins. So what we're really trying to say is you want to maximize, or I guess minimize, the amount of margins you use so you can maximize the image or the graphic that you have on your slide that you want to show to your audience. But the bad news is there are not any margin settings in PowerPoint, but there are some workarounds. And we'll go over the workarounds in just a moment. If you looked at the silent demo, which I'm sure you did, there are settings for how big the slide is and which way you want to orient the slide. Portrait is basically up and down. And landscape is long ways left to right. One other thing we're going to talk about is you cannot mix landscapes in PowerPoint. You cannot have a landscape I mean, you cannot mix orientation. You cannot have a landscape orientation with a portrait in the same presentation. But there's a workaround for that also. And in Word, there are a lot of options. You can combine, you know, small left right margins with a wide top and bottom margin, or you can have them the same, a lot of variation. But Word is a lot more flexible with the paper than PowerPoint. PowerPoint is more for the screen where the notes and the handouts are kind of like secondary. Okay. So to review, we told you that a portrait view is basically vertical and landscape is horizontal. And you may ask, what is a margin for? 
Well, I had a Sunday school teacher many years ago said that margins are for taking notes. So think about that for a while. Don't let that white paper go unused. And we've talked about how margins in Word is a lot more flexible. So in reality, you will probably never use this feature, but it's nice to know that it exists and how to manipulate it in case you do need to make really small margins or really large margins for whatever presentation you're making. One idea I thought of just here on YouTube with their new podcast feature, you have to use a square thumbnail. So you would want your slide to have the same margin for the same area, top and bottom, left and right, so that it comes out square once you save it as a JPEG or whatever the case may be to upload to YouTube. To get to the option to adjust your margins of your orientation, you simply go to, to you go to design slide size. And 4.3 sorry four to three is basically the older format that you have the black borders on the side of your video and 16 to 9 is more standard but we want to go to custom slide size and as, and as you can see here this is sized for widescreen which is the same as letter paper which is what we showed you earlier eight and a half by 11. But notice that the widths are 13.3 and seven and a half high. This is set up for legal size paper, which is eight by 14. So you'd have to make that 10 inches. And then it gives you some options whether you want to maximize or ensure that it fits. Basically it's scaling the image for the paper and the margins that you have set up. You typically want to maximize. And note that it keeps the correct or the previous setting once you switch from landscape to portrait. Now, one thing that I was not aware of, the notes, handouts, and outline can be a different orientation because that's typically going straight to your printer. The slides could be electronic or they could be paper, but they're typically always electronic and paper is an option. So that's how you get to that. Go to design, slide, size. You can manually adjust the height and the width of the slide, which I showed you earlier, which effectively adjust the margins. This can also be done in the slide master view level or area. So if you go back to new slide, and pick one of these, this would effectively set your margins based on all the settings you have already set up either here or on the slide master or as another another way of doing it you can set up one slide as a template which one that i do not see here is a slide that is fully maximized but with margins essentially it would be like this And you may ask, when would you use this? This is when you're bringing over pictures that you want to be full scale on the slide. If you pick any of the others, they'll typically either be too small or be too big to have to resize. It's just more clicks, more work to do. So I found this little trick to be pretty neat right here. Remember that eight and a half by 11 inch paper is typically the maximum that most of us will be using, unless you specifically will be using legal size paper, which is eight by 14. 
you'll need to figure out the smallest margin allowed for your printer. It's going to vary from printer to printer, even within the same manufacturer. Then that will determine how your slides, notes, outlines, and handouts will look. Another thing you could do to help some is turn on the rulers on the top and on the side. So you can see this is three and a half twice would be seven or three and three quarters twice would be seven and a half. Six. This is not centered for some reason. Well, you can see this is um, six and a half. So this is set for, for 13 inches. Which is set up for legal. But I never print legal. I don't even have any legal paper here, but that's, that's what the slide is set up for. So what it comes down to is the paper size, whether it's eight and a half by 11 or eight by 14 or some other size, the slide size, which you determine, and also the orientation, which way you want to, which way are the majority of your objects that need to be displayed. Now, as far as the workaround, we're going to, need to think about this one for a while. It's not very complicated. If you have, I'm going to say, a lot of your slides are portrait because of the images, that's okay. Make that a presentation. You may want to call it ABC portrait. And then if the rest of your slides are landscape, you may want to call it ABC landscape. So you'll have two two files and the workaround is to link the first file to the second file using hyperlinks and we've talked about that and you can specifically go from a particular slide in portrait presentation to a slide in the landscape presentation and also backwards so think about it. You got the slide set up this way. You need to come over here to a landscape slide. You hyperlink, show that slide or slides. Then you have another hyperlink to go back to your portrait presentation and really know once you know the difference. So you cannot mix orientations in one presentation, but we've just discussed the workaround. Another workaround for printing slides without white edges will follow. The, the notes tell me to go to design, slide size, custom slide size, select your orientation, go to view, and then notes master, note, notes master. And then in the placeholders group, uncheck the boxes for the placeholders, page number, header, footer, date so that you can use that space for your image. It says to drag the image so that it's slightly smaller than full page and make sure the margins on your notes master are at least that large. Then click file, print, print, and see how it looks. Click view, notes master to try to Center the, center the image, and then print again. So it's trial and error. Uh, hopefully you won't have a lot of those to do, but that's the workaround to try to minimize the white board around your slides when you print them out. We've talked about changing the slide orientation. We've talked about mixing and matching orientations in one presentation. So to review what we've discussed so far, we found out that, that there is not a margin command or feature in PowerPoint, but there's a workaround. The orientations of portrait and landscape cannot be mixed and matched in one presentation, but there's a workaround. We discussed how to minimize the white border on printed slides 
And we also found out that the orientation of slides, handouts, notes, and outlines, outlines can be mixed and matched. Or a better way of saying it, the slide orientation can be different from the other three options as far as handouts, notes, and outlines. Thank you for listening today. If you have any questions, please let me know and we'll try to figure it out. Take care.